Okay, in today's video, we're going over our process for flat towing our Honda behind our view. So we do like one, two punch. He's in charge of the RV and the like actual hookup system. And I'm in charge of pulling up the Honda and getting our braking system all set up. Um, so it requires a bit of communication, which has taken us about two years to lock in, um, but we finally got it. Uh, so we wanna give you kind of a rundown of how we do it. So you can skip that kind of whole two year learning process. Um, so we'll show you what it looks like. Okay, so once we have the Honda pulled up, Carissa's usually in the Honda and I'm here directing traffic. I get it pretty lined up to the center here and the arms just kind of tilts out of the way. You gotta get the car locked on as the first process. So get the arm there, line it up, put the pin in. Put the safety pin on. That's one. All right. It has an up arrow, so always put that side up. Okay, so now the car is attached to the Honda, but these arms are not locked. These levers need to be activated to lock it. So what I'm gonna do is hop in the RV we're going to get the uh, Honda through the process of flat towing and get it put in neutral. I'll pull the RV forward and these arms will lock and engage the way they're supposed to be. Okay, so we've got a 2012 Honda CRV. So check your manual before you do any of this because I think it's different for just about every car. But for our Honda CRV, this is how it's all done. My turn? Okay, so before you get everything locked and loaded, you have to put the car through all of the gears. Um, so we shift through and you sit and drive for 10 seconds is what I do. I'm not sure if it's five or 10, but 10 feels like safer. So you let it sit here for 10 seconds and then you kick it into neutral. And then Charles will pull forward and it will pop those arms to engage like the whole system. Okay, so the car is in neutral and it's waiting for Charles to pull the RV forward. So he's gonna hop in there and we're gonna keep our eye on these two little levers on the arms. And once they pop and click, that lets us know that it's ready to go. So I'm gonna give him the hand signal of go forward. One popped. So then I'm gonna tell him to stop. And what I'm gonna do is I go back into the Honda because that left lever didn't pop. I turn the steering wheel towards that arm, that left arm. So I turn the steering wheel a little bit to the left come up back up here to eyeball it. I'm gonna tell him to go forward again. And then that one pops. And I'm gonna tell him to stop and that we are good to go with an okay sign. So sometimes when we're hooking up, if we can find a slight incline and put the Honda behind the RV, it kind of almost automatically locks those bracket arms in place without having to pull the RV forward. So you don't want any extreme hills because you don't want to be rolling away, but just a slight incline makes it really easy to get those locked in. Okay, so now that the Honda is locked onto the RV, I keep a little bag of all the safety gear. We have cables to keep it from detaching. I have one black one, another black one with the pull pin for the emergency brake, and our running lights and brake lights and turn signals. 
So for, the, for my process, I like to do them in order. I'll do black first and then color. So you're clipping it to one side here, crossing it under the bars to the opposite side. And then I'll clip a color, I'll clip pink first and cross the black cable to the other side. And now I'm working on top of the blue ox. I'll take this pink color and attach it to the pull pin on the emergency brake. Okay, so this is the electrical cord and there is a certain way to put it on. You got a seven pin here. There's a little tab that will catch the, the flap that you flip up, it'll grab that. So tab up on the seven pin and it's the same thing on the four pin. There's a tab here that when the, the door opens, you pop it in and it grabs. All right, so while Charles is up there doing his thing, I'm back here getting our Blue Ox Patriot 3 set up. It's just the emergency brake for the car in case something crazy happens. Um, and I start by plugging this bit into the cigarette lighter to give it power. And then we have a cord that is wired in somewhere. I'm sure Charles might be able to tell you more about that. That I then plug in here into the breakaway outlet. Um, the claw here attaches to the actual brake pedal. There's a little um, button on the top that releases it so that it squeezes onto the pedal. And then you just push up to open it again and it locks into that position to make it easy to get on. We added this little sticker for up so that you don't get confused and put it on upside down because it doesn't work as well that way. So you're in neutral. You've got your key turned to position one, like the accessory position. You can hear the ding, ding, ding. Um, and the first thing I do is make sure that everything's off. So I make sure that headlights are switched to off, the radio is off, all my windows are up. I make sure that the emergency brake of the car is off. Um, no heat seaters, no air conditioning, like everything's off. You don't want your car to be sucking any more energy out of the battery than necessary. The only thing we want to be on is our blue ox brake system. So I'm gonna put the seat back so I have lots of space to work and I'll show you how we do this. All right. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're just gonna get this handy dandy little machine set here. And we keep our cord wrapped up nice-ish. Um, and the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna plug it into the cigarette lighter in the car. Okay, once that's plugged into the cigarette lighter, we're gonna take this breakaway auxiliary plug, plug it in, and then we take the claw here and attach it to the actual brake pedal, and then push the button on top so that it unlocks and squeezes that really nice. We've got a nice little sticker on there to remind us which way is up, and make sure that's good. Once it's nice and flat, I bring the seat forward within about an inch and make sure it's just kind of like lined up nice and straight. We're gonna push power. You'll see the green and the blue lights blinking. That lets you know that power is working. And then we're gonna push the setup button and it depresses the brake and presses back against the seat to make sure it can get nice and secure in case it has to initiate the brake. And that's it. Okay, so we're all hooked up, and the last thing I need to do is plug in our screen for the brake attachment, the blue Patriot, Patriot 3. 